Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of Beauty, Brains, and Bible. If you want to know how you can hear directly from God and look into the supernatural with your spiritual eyes and get to the root cause of your situations, this video is for you. Keep on watching. Beauty, Brains, and Bible. Beauty, Brains, and Bible. Beauty, Brains, and Bible. Bible. Welcome to my channel. Okay, you guys. So I've made a list of 10 things that have effectively worked for me on my spiritual journey on how is it that I can be able to hear from God directly, get to the root cause of my problems, looking into the supernatural with your spiritual eyes, open visions. It doesn't have to be a dream. It could be eyes wide open. You can go straight to God and he can answer your questions like this literally and truly um here's a quick example my daughter was about to um her job had got um shut down they gave her severance pay and she had about i think two months um to make a decision to either get another job or follow them to the new location so she decided to take the severance pay but before she did that she came to me and was like mom this is what's going on with my job what do you think i should do i'm happy that she even trusts me to even ask me that my daughter is now 21 years old and basically I went to the Lord. I'm not going to just tell her what to do. I'm not going to look at the physical and see, hmm, let's weigh out the options. No, I'm going to go to our father because he knows what's best. And this one was a little tricky for me because I'm like, you know, this is my kid. And it's like, I don't want to steer her wrong. I don't want to steer anyone wrong. But when it's in your house, it's like, mom, mom, mom. They could look at you like, you did this. So anyway, I went to the Lord. I went right inside my prayer room and I said, God, what should she do? And the voice told me, tell her to leave that job and get, um, just wait and get a new job. She didn't have anything else lined up. I just went to the Lord. I'm like, what should she do? And he said, leave the job. And, uh, you know, <laughs> she helps pay certain parts of the bills here. Um, so it's like, I knew I was going to have to cover my child no matter how long it took her to get a job. But I was trusting the Lord. Within two months time, she did get another job paying her, I think, over $2 more. And it's a better location, you know, better job. So great decision. But how did we come up with that decision? By going to God and listening. And all I did was go in my spiritual closet, well, my prayer closet, and close my eyes. And I spoke to the Lord and he spoke it right back to me. He said, tell her to quit, quit. I got a little nervous because it was like, okay, she doesn't have anything lined up. It's been two months now. I've been covering her portion of her bills, God. So it's like... You know, I got a little nervous, but I'm like, I always trust the Lord and it worked out beautifully. My daughter loves her job. She gets the hours that she wants. Great discounts, okay? So here are the 10 things that you guys can do to help open up your um, spiritual eyes and look into the supernatural because you don't want to just shoot out blank prayers when you're praying. You want to be able to see what exactly is causing this situation. If there's a, a root cause, you want to be able to uproot it okay and just sever it at the root and destroy it and burn it to ashes okay so this is why a lot of people pray and pray and they don't really get the right results they don't know what to do after like i prayed i paid my tithe i go to church i do everything you know I, i'm i'm trying to live a, a righteous life and things are not moving for me we have to be able to go deeper so number one total surrender you have to be willing. You have to be willing to give God all of you, all of your mind, your body, your soul, your energy, your spirit. Now, keep in mind, God does not need you to be perfect. You don't have to get everything right because I'm not getting everything right till this day. But God's been talking to me even when I was out there in the world. OK, he's going to still talk to his children, but you just have to give him your heart. Give him all of you. Give him all of every inch of you. Don't hold nothing back. If you are also in sin, don't be in comfortable sin. Will he still talk to you? He does actually because he talked to me when I was in sin. You know what I'm saying? It's like I don't have everything perfect now and he speaks. But as long as you're willing, as long as you don't want to be in that sin, as long as you're not comfortable in that sin, as long as you've said, God, I give you full and total surrender, he's going to do all the work um, from there on out. He's going to do it all. He's going to purge you. He's going to prune you. He's going to clean you all up, you know, slowly. It's a process. He's going to start purging you and taking everything out of you slowly, you know, slowly, 
it's gonna go it's gonna go so just stick with him give him total surrender no matter where you are how you are god will speak to you i promise you he will speak to you he speaks to anyone he really does he speaks to anyone but that's just number one total complete surrender okay give him your life the second one is living by the spirit living by the spirit i'll do another video regarding that living by the spirit is tricky you guys it has these moments where you kind of get a little nervous like serving god by the spirit you have it means total complete trust Okay, you can be sitting in your home and you don't know where rent is coming from, where the mortgage is coming from, how you're going to pay these bills, how you're going to feed these kids. But guess what? You have to remain still and calm and totally trust God because that's how it is living in the spirit, living in the spirit. You just have to listen for him and be still and wait. Okay, now that's a whole different video because it's a lot that comes with living in the spirit, but you got to be able to trust the Holy Spirit at all times. The third one that I want to mention is a minimum social life. The minimum most, the, the, the least you can do, you guys, would be great. Meaning little TV, little radio, little hanging out, little partying. You know what I'm saying? Like just keep everything to the, a minimum. Keep your certain conversations to a minimum. You have to keep your mind open and clear so God can be able to speak to you because if it's filled with too much clutter, too much, you know, chaos, you're not going to really hear from him or you may think you heard from him and it ended up being the devil or yourself. So you don't want to not hear clearly from him and make wrong mistakes thinking it was him and it wasn't. So minimum social life as possible. The fourth one is you have to have a strong desire to read your word. Otherwise, you can be deceived. You can hear God speak to you, but you have to be able to confirm his voice by his word. If it doesn't add up or match up to his word, it is not God. That's one of the number one ways to know if it's God or not. If it's not in the Bible, that is not God. Okay, if you don't have some type of peace in your heart, chances are chances are it is not God. So you have to have a really strong desire to get into God's word because that's where he feeds you. Okay, our spiritual bellies have to be full. Okay, so you have to be saturated in the word. If you don't have a desire to read the Bible like a lot of people, ask him. Just ask him. He'll give you anything you want, especially if you're asking God, God, I, re I really want to read the Bible. Give me the desire. You think you're not going to answer that? He is going to answer it. Just keep asking until you receive your answer. Some people ask and they just give up, but you got to ask until that thing breaks through. Okay, so get into your word. The other thing is, I believe this is number five, pray without ceasing. Okay, I pray three to four times a day. Sometimes two, depending upon the day, but I literally pray three to four times a day, hardcore. I'd really try to make sure I pray at least three times. Morning, evening prayer, midnight prayer, okay? So you got to stay in prayer. You cannot be a strong Christian. You cannot hear from God if you're not stuck away, locked away, you know, in his presence. You have to become a captive of Jesus Christ. You have to become a captive. That's it. Okay, so pray, pray, pray. And if you're not a prayer, ask him, say, God, help me. Give me a prayer life. Give me a life of prayer. Help me to become a prayer and a warrior prayer at that. Um, the next one that I have here, throughout the day, keep God on your mind. Keep God on your mind. Even if you're not a hardcore prayer, at least as of right now, think of him. Think of him. Like, well, here's a great thing to do to just live in the spirit to stay fresh in the spirit throughout your day just say thank you jesus thank you jesus while you're washing the dish dishes thank you jesus while you're driving the car thank you jesus okay getting your hair done sitting thank you jesus you know and it's just every opportunity you get after you just went grocery shopping you putting the groceries away thank you jesus as you're in the shower thank you jesus so those are great ways to keep him fresh in your mind one thing that I do is as soon as I get up in the morning, I turn on sermons. I'm a sermon person. A lot of people love to listen to gospel music and worship music. I love gospel and worship music, but I'm a sermon person. That's why in my last video, I'm like, give me four hours of church service. Like I can hear sermons all day long. So churches that are two hours and under, I chances are I will not attend those churches. <laughs> 
I need to church. That's at least three hours because I have to be fed because I'll leave hungry, unsatisfied, and annoyed. And I'm like, you know, I ain't going back to that church because that sermon was only 30 minutes and I'm still hungry. So I'm one of those people. I love, love, love hearing the word of God. It feeds my spirit. So all day long from the moment I wake up to the moment I go to sleep, you guys, literally, 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 I am on YouTube listening to sermons all day. So keep God on your mind as much as possible. The next one that I have here is you cannot be double-minded. You cannot be double-minded. You have to be able to trust God totally, okay? Um, the Bible says um, a person that is double-minded double will not get anything from him. Double-minded person should not expect anything from God. So if you're one foot in, one foot out, trusting God one day, and then you're trusting yourself the next day, you're not going to hear from God. You're going to be confused. So if you're one of these people that don't trust what you hear from the Lord, if you don't trust your instincts, you're not going to be able to properly hear from God because the thing is, as he speaks to you, you have to trust it because that's the only way to exercise it. So let's say the Lord shows, tells you something about someone and you feel it strong in your spirit, a prophetic word, you have to trust that and go speak it to that person, share it with the person, and chances are they're going to tell you, oh my gosh, this is so real. You have to exercise it. Trust what you hear. I've, I hear constantly from the Lord, and he wants that relationship with everyone. Um, another thing is we all should know an intimate relationship with God. If you're not hanging out with God, if God is not one of your besties, then you're not going to really hear from him as you can. Everyone has a level that they can hear from God, but he, God, let me tell you guys something. He likes to speak a lot. He actually speaks a lot. If you go to him right now with a question, chances are he will answer it. There's times where I don't get an answer from God, which just means be still and trust me. Okay. It's not time for the answer, but I'll say majority of the time, if I go to him with a question, he will tell me. So make sure you are building your relationship with the Lord. And then number nine, forget all fear. It will block your sight. There's little demons, footmen of Satan. And those are the main little imps he likes to send out after us is spirits of fear. Okay, because fear will keep us from progressing and prospering and, you know, growing to the things of God. So you cannot be a fearful person. You cannot. With God, it's all about taking chances because he's a spirit being. We can't see him. We don't hear an audible voice. So you can't have fear. You have to become a risk taker and then and just trust what you hear from God. So fear has to be completely gone, out of sight, out of mind. We do not have a spirit of fear. So you have to make sure that you remove that fear and live off faith instead. Number 10, you must desire it. You must have the desire to want to hear from God. You must have the desire to want to be in his presence. Like Holy Spirit is my bestie. He's my, he's my, like my, I, I literally say my bestie, you know, Jesus is my brother and God is my father. So I'd be like, Hey brother, like, Hey dad, you know, I talk like that. I'm like, Hey bestie. I literally talk like that to the, to God and all of them. I literally do. And when you talk like that, like they're real people, like they're really here, you will hear from them. They will, the Lord will favor you a lot because you are trusting in him. God is, everything about God is trust, 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 trust. He will test you so much just to see if you trust him. And if you fail those tests, he's not going to really communicate with you as, as much. All right. So you have to desire it. Um, one thing that I did for God to speak to me. I desired it so bad because as I'm reading the Bible, I'm like, Lord, you talked a lot to Moses. You talked a lot to Abraham and David. You had a special relationship with Enoch. And I'm like, where's that God that spoke audibly to these people back in the day? You're the same God yesterday, today, and forevermore, right? So I'm like, you may not speak audibly, just, you know, possibly, I'm not saying he can't, but I'm sure you want to still speak to your people like you did back then. You want to do it now. So I'm like, I'll just pray to the Lord. I'm like, Lord, please talk to me like you spoke to Moses. Speak. I want a relationship like you had with Abraham and Noah. You know, I'm like, God, be with me like you were with Joseph. Um, my life was pretty much like a Joseph roller coaster. Okay, one, one, one moment, one season is good. The next season you're in a pit. The next season you in a palace. Um, so it just was a roller coaster, okay? And the thing is, is that you got to want it. You have to desire it. So I would reference those people in the Bible. I'm like, God, you 
gave David so many victories. I want victories just like you gave David. God, like, look at how everywhere Joseph was, you carried him. Like, you protected him. You, you gave him so much favor. I want that favor. Look at how you spoke to Moses up there on the mount. Like, you just was, like, giving him all this glory over his face. Like, I want that God. So I started searching for it and searching for it. So, Keep in mind, once you, you know, start reaching all of these 10 things and practicing these 10 things, be ready for him to set you apart, okay? Because once you go deep in God, he will pull you away. And I have, you know, videos regarding that. So it does come with a price. If you want to hear from God on the level where you're literally looking into the supernatural realms and you're seeing things, it's going to um, cost you something, which is devotion, so you have to be devoted to God. You have to participate in things of God, communicate with the things of God. You got to be totally surrendered and total devotion. Um, so uh, here's a couple um, examples of me seeing into the supernatural. Um, I had, when I was living with my niece, I just did the, um, the video yesterday about how I left everything behind. I left my whole life and followed the Lord and I ended up living with my niece. So my t eight months of living there with my niece, my niece, she clearly had things that she wanted to find out through the Lord. She's, my whole family are really, really deep into God. We seek his word in everything. We really don't make moves unless we speak to him. So she was troubled by three things. Okay. And she wanted, a, you know, she had a question for the Lord regarding these three things. She didn't know what direction to take. And, you know, she was, she came to me and she's like, you know what? Um, I, I, I need some advice, some guidance. And she said, you know what? My niece tested me and I'm glad that she did. She was like, I have three things that I need to ask the Lord, but I'm not going to tell you what they are. If you're anointed, as you say, or you feel like, it was not like I was out here throwing it around, but it was like, she felt like, felt it. And I was coming to people with some things and she was like, let's really see how powerful you are. I'm not going to tell you what these three things are. I want you to just go to the Lord and let him reveal it to you. Fine by me. I took up the challenge that I've never done anything like that before. But I'm like, hey, this is how you exercise the gifts, okay? We're not trying to test God or play around with God, but this is how you know who you are and how powerful you are by yourself without anyone else, not needing anyone else. I went to the Lord. I think that same night or the very next morning, I'm saying, I'm like, okay, Lord, she needs a word from you. I don't know what it is she needs. Tell me. And he told me. So the next day, I, she came home and I'm like, okay, I, I spoke to the Lord. And she was like, okay, what did he tell you? And I told her, <laughs> I told her everything. She was like, oh. she started running around the living room. Oh my God. Oh my God. Debbie, the Lord is talking to you. The, the, the Lord is using you. And I'm looking at her like, <laughs> and the thing is, I can't say I was surprised because I've been in the presence of God for a long time on and off. That's what I'm saying. Like he will still use you no matter what, but I hit everything on the target. I literally did hit everything on a target. And another thing is, another example that I want to use is another um, person that I know, um, she was battling. Her husband hasn't been able to find um, a stable job. Great degrees, great man, but the devil, for whatever reason, I don't know what happened. So she was like, hey, everyone, pray for me. So you know me, I'm a prayer warrior. I'm going to pray. So I, I, I went into prayer with her and... Um, basically the Lord told me, and I saw it with, with my own spiritual eyes. Um, the Lord basically told me to tell her, Hey, the blessing is there. Okay. So don't pray for a job, you know, rebuke the enemy. Okay. So, cause he's the one blocking the blessing. I've released the blessing for your husband to get a job, but it's not me. It's the devil. So I told her, I said, look, man, don't waste your time praying and asking God for it. The Lord already said he's released it. We need to fight for it. So I will join you in warfare. Let's fight. As I was in warfare, you know, the Lord basically told me, I don't remember if it was a vision or what, but the Lord specifically told me, um, the devil, um, there's a demon. What I, okay. This is what I saw. Okay. I saw her husband in the spiritual realm curled up in the corner of their home and there was a demon there and he had his legs wrapped up, okay? So the demon basically was saying that, no, I'm not going to allow him to get a job. I'm not going to, you know, allow his feet to move and be free and go work because I, I no. And then the Lord confirmed it for me. The Lord said that this demon is not, you know, trying to leave because he has legal rights, 
okay? If there is a devil that has legal rights, you got to go renounce. You got to go repent. You got to find out what that situation is. And the Lord specifically told me what the situation was. Because I'm like, okay, God, the devil is there. So let's beat him and get rid of him. But we need to know what the legal rights are. So don't waste your breath praying and praying and praying when there's a devil that has your feet chained up. It won't let you go. You need to be able to recognize the devil. I literally saw the devil. Okay. And the, the spirit. Okay. And he had her husband chained up. So I have to now go to God and say, okay, God, what is the legal rights? And then Lord told me what the legal rights were. So I talked to her the next day and I was like, yo, the Lord said this and this and this. And it was hard for me to tell her what it was, but how about this? She said, well, the, that's exactly what the Lord um, showed me in a dream last night. The Lord came and told me exactly that. So if you know what the legal rights are, you know and can you know identify that demon, you become a powerful force. The devil don't want to mess with you anymore. The devil is scared of you. You become a serious threat because now you can identify and expose him. You know, so you can expose him really well. After we got rid of that demon, <laughs> he and, and I told her, I said, the Lord said he should be getting a job in two weeks. He got a really good job offer in about two weeks. But I'll be honest with you guys. I don't know what went wrong with that situation. I don't really get in people's business, but something tied it up still, okay? We we got some type of breakthrough, but something tied it up and I don't know what it was, okay? So I kind of have an idea today because as I analyze people's situation, I'm like, well, God, we saw the demon. We rebuked it. He got the job offer, okay? Just like you said, but what happened is like something stole it right back. So... Some people need deeper work spiritually so that way you can find more and more because it's never just one demon. It's always a multiple. So it's like that's why you have to stay in spiritual connection and warfare so that way you can get total deliverance. Um, um, so um, here's another example of seeing into the spirit, spirit realm. I was at a gathering a couple weeks ago and it was a bunch of women and they were sharing. You know how you throw your... You know, we were sharing stuff around a bonfire and basically uh, one, uh, so much emotions were coming out and one of the girls was just crying and, and decided to share with us her story. It's, an, it's a very, very incredible story, very painful story. And you can just feel the hurt and see the hurt. It was just tremendous for her and I felt so terrible for her. As she was speaking and me not even trying to, as you know, you're listening to someone and you're watching them. And then I saw into the spirit realm and showed me exactly what is, well, part of what is going on. I clearly saw two black figures standing behind her with knives. Can you imagine in the spirit realm, you have two demons behind you and they're just cutting you and cutting you and cut, cutting you. And this is why she was so damaged and so broken because in the natural, you're living life like this, but on the inside in the spirit realm, you're like this. You're totally devastated. Like you have no strength, no power. You're bruised. You're, you're damaged. You're broken. They're destroying you. And this is why, it's, you know, a lot of people suffer from depression. So for me, being a, you know, spiritual advisor and all that, I would go and tackle those two entities and find out what else is there, what legal rights is there. So let's get that eradicated and so she can experience deliverance. So I saw the two demons, you know, stabbing her. And the reason why they were stabbing her, there's always a reason. The devil doesn't just come at you for nothing. In her belly, I saw a jewel, okay, which was amazing. So when you know stuff like that, it kind of gives you courage. It kind of gives you hope. It's like, oh, so these demons are coming at me because there's something special inside of me that needs to break out. They're trying to hold me back. They're trying to sabotage and hijack my destiny. So there is something precious and powerful inside her belly that the devil just does not want her to receive or have. She, he doesn't want it to grow and, and blossom and come out. So he's keeping her trapped. Okay, so that's one situation with that one. And another woman, and we'll be done because I can go on and on. Another woman, she was going through all kinds of warfare as well. And as we were at a church setting, we were, you know, doing um, prayer. 
And as they were prophesying over her, I'm looking at her because I didn't really know her situation. I'm looking up at her and I don't try to look. It just happens. You know what I'm saying? I, if I try to go into the spirit realm, that's me going to my prayer closet. But if you're just talking and it just comes, it just shows up. So as they're prophesying for her and I'm looking at her, all of a sudden these two huge, and I don't know what's up with two, but that's two times it was two. Two, her, the first woman, her, her demons, those behind her was regular size. But this woman, they were giants. And I was like, oh my God. God. And the greater the demon, the greater the witchcraft. Okay. So something was done through witchcraft because yo, those demons were huge. And I was like, oh my goodness, a person like that is not going to be a one, two, three. It can be if God wants it to, but if your demons are this big and hers is this big, you can imagine who may experience the greater breakthrough or the quicker breakthrough. So her demons were so huge. And I'm like, girl, in my mind, I'm like, you going to need some prayer, some real prayer, not just no one, two, three, shoo, 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 prayer, no, some, some warfare. And that's what I do. I love warfare. I come after the demons like the Lord said, you know, told me I'm a demon slayer. Like, <laughs> I slay demons for a living and I love it. And that's why the devil hates me so much. But anyway, that's it that I'm going to share on this video, you guys. So please exercise those 10 things that I share with you and you can become so powerful in the spirit realm. You can become a spiritual advisor, prophetess, minister, whatever you want to be to the people around you. Like you can start praying for people. You can start setting people free. You can start helping people get breakthrough if you can see into the supernatural and get to the root cause of their problem. Thank you so much guys for watching another video of Beauty, Brains, and Bible. I appreciate you guys. I love you guys. Please make sure you watch my video that I posted yesterday about um, a quick glimpse of heaven and the vision that I had of hell, okay? So I appreciate you guys. Make sure you read the Bible, rebuke the devil, and eat your veggies. Love you guys. Bye. Beauty, brains, and Bible, Bible, Bible. Beauty, brains, and Bible, Bible, Bible. Beauty, brains, and Bible.